My name's Will Nash. I'm an artist, primarily a sculptor. I do quite a wide variety of, of different uh, projects, often outdoors. This one is, yeah, it's in a particularly lovely spot. This is um, Warnham Nature Reserve. The reserve itself is an old industrial site. Uh, the pond, which is now surrounded by hides, provided power for, for milling and also for furnaces for the iron industry. And the form of the bat bothy is derived from the interior of the furnace in a sort of old-fashioned iron foundry. It's absolutely inspired and embedded in the place. My name's Jacob Everett. I'm the Countryside and Ecology Manager for Horsham District Council and Warnham Nature Reserve, which is where we're at at the moment, is one of the sites that I manage. The Warden team and myself were quite keen to get Will to build something that was going to benefit the Nature Reserve as well as be a, an art piece. It's a sculpture and a habitat, so a habitable sculpture, and its residents will be uh, local bats. There's two ways the bats might use it. They might use it as a maternity roost, so to breed in, or they might use it as a hibernaculum, which is what they go to in the winter when the temperature stays much more stable. It's made of Horsham stone, so uh, this is a local hard sandstone, which um, we've salvaged from an old memorial garden. So it's been brought to Warnham, and we're currently building it on site. Uh, shovel. Yeah. If we're in a rush for it, you just got to knock it up. Yeah. You can just sort of leave it. My name's inside. Steve Purvis. Uh, I got involved in this project through uh, working for an organisation called Green Gym, who are like a volunteer organisation. The tasks we run are very varied. They can run from uh, cutting down shrub and keeping paths open to thinning out woodland and so on. And uh, there's a guy called uh, Ryan who looks after the Green Gym volunteers on behalf of the council, and he also volunteers uh, to help build the Bat Bothy with Will. Yeah. And if you spot that, like this one's a 45. We've been starting off just by grading some of the stones um, because it's important that we have um, the layers of stone all evenly matched when we're doing each layer 30s and 40s 40s 50s 50s 60s that sort of thing uh, and the idea is as you build the sculpture up you don't want all the layers to be regular you want them to be irregular so we're, we're mixing those those different thicknesses as we go up the sculpture I think we're about one meter high uh, the sculpture will stand um, 2.8 metres, so, so we're just over a third of the way. This is our centre point. Um, in order to, to get the right curve, we, we use this sort of measuring device. There's not a kind of a constant grabbing the tape measure. There's this, it's very simple, you just repeat the circle and you go up a bit and the circle gets smaller. I think of it as a mathematical object, and I suppose by that I mean that it's kind of made to a certain little set of rules which allow the making to happen in quite a precise and accurate way. But occasionally we have to you know shape the stone in order to get the curve but usually it's more a case of finding the right piece to fit. You're doing this ongoing jigsaw puzzle of, uh, of arranging uh, and, and it, it sort of starts to become quite intuitive, kind of finding the little triumph of something fitting together really nicely. Over there. Yeah, this is the last one going in. We literally couldn't have built the boffy without the volunteer help. There's a sort of thing that happens while you're making something like this where people just end up chatting. I don't know, it must be a sort of quite primal human thing about connecting over a, a sort of a shared physical activity, which often I don't have because I'm in the studio on my own. Yeah, we can plug that or something. I arrived this morning and I was amazed at how it had come on and shaped, and the fact that there was only 25 centimetres to complete it was really exciting. Well, we're now nearing completion and we're about two of the uh, courses off the top now. Uh, so we're now getting very close to the final stone, which will be a capping stone, which we'll be putting on later today. We actually found it the other day, but it wasn't round, so it had to be cut round. Alan decided very bravely that he was going to try and cut it round. It all went to plan except for one little tiny chip out of it which we all felt we could live with. What's that one about there? Yeah. To you a little bit. Yeah. 
been a really enjoyable process, like bringing this thing out of the ground. And because of working with the volunteers as well, you know, there, there's, a, there's a sort of camaraderie that's really lovely. You're hanging out with people you've never met before and you have a common purpose. And then that brings you together in a really lovely way. You know, the people who've come have been really enthusiastic and embraced it. It feels like a sort of really holistic, positive experience. Well, it's a privilege. You don't get the opportunity very often to help with a sculpture. It's been fantastic. I've enjoyed every second. You feel like you're really contributing, that uh, something's going to last for probably many centuries there, I think. Take a bit of that off. <laughs> Have a bit of bite. <laughs>